Hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome back. Unit 8, Metamorphism and Metamorphic Rocks. I will be upfront and honest with you, this one tends to be one of the shorter ones students tend to like. This one's pretty much to the point, not much fluff. Let's get to it. So, Metamorphism. So this is the last branch of kind of the rock cycle that we'll kind of get into. So we've talked about igneous rocks and volcanism. We talked about weathering and erosion as it pertains uh, to sedimentary rocks. And now we're getting into metamorphism and metamorphic rocks. This will be our last little bit in the rock cycle. And so <clears throat> let's break down that word. So meta denotes a change in condition. Morph means form. So a change in form. So again, metamorphism is a change in form from one rock to another rock. So there's an existing rock, some rock that already exists, but we're going to do something to it to change it to something else, to morph it. All right. Um, that change can be mineralogical, textural, chemical, structural change uh, that occurs in rocks um, below the area of diagenesis. Diagenesis, that's the area where sedimentary rocks form. That's an area where there's a little bit of heat, a little bit of pressure in order to lithify sediment into sedimentary rocks. But below that area, deeper in the earth, or places where there's higher temperatures than that, or higher pressures, that will result in metamorphism. <clears throat> so to talk about metamorphic rocks, we, start, we first need to talk about protoliths. Let's break down that word. Proto means first, no pun intended why we have to study it first, lithos, is the Greek word for rock. So protolith is the original unmetamorphosed rock from which a given metamorphic rock is then later formed. So again, because a metamorphic rock is some other original rock that we apply some heat and pressure to, and then it becomes a different rock. Then it becomes a metamorphic rock. Um, so a protolith is also known as a parent rock sometimes. So that becomes important because the original type of rock, the protolith, the parent rock, depending on what that is, when we apply heat and pressure to it, is what will determine what the new metamorphic rock becomes, whatever the original parent rock was. Now, we take that original parent rock, and there's different grades of metamorphism. So the more heat, the more pressure that you apply to it, the more the, the rock will change. So on the lower end of the spectrum, on a, what's known as a low-grade metamorphic rock, these are rocks metamorphosed under a temperature and pressure conditions up to about 400 degrees Celsius and 400 megapascals of pressure. More on that in just a second. That's just a unit of pressure. These typically occur 5 to 15 kilometers below Earth's surface, so about 3 to 10 miles below Earth's surface. From zero to three miles, that's where the area of diagenesis typically is, where sedimentary rocks are formed. But below that, you'll start to get low-grade metamorphic rocks. Deeper than that, you'll get high-grade metamorphic rocks. Rocks metamorphosed under temperature and pressure conditions higher than 400 degrees Celsius and higher than 400 megapascals of pressure. That occurs about 15 to 35 kilometers below Earth's surface. The deeper you go down in the Earth, the warmer it gets, the more pressure that there is. If you go too far, it's going to be too hot and too much pressure, and then things are going to melt, and then we're going to get back into the realm of igneous rocks, and that gets too far. But metamorphic rocks, there's just enough heat and pressure to alter protoliths, original rocks, whether it gets to a low-grade metamorphism or high-grade metamorphism. So we need temperatures and pressures. So we're talking about temperatures, 400 degrees Celsius is about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So your oven at home, you know, that's about half of what your oven at home can do. So that's pretty hot. <clears throat> um, but as far as pressures are concerned, just to give you some reference, because I, I use this, this number, 400 megapascals of pressure. Just for reference, um, the air in your uh, tire in your car has about 0 0.2 megapascals of pressure. A human bite Ah, it can apply about 1.1 megapascals of pressure. So 400 times that is what's needed to make metamorphic rocks. 
Car wash spray. So if you've ever been sprayed by the, you know, the, the high velocity nozzle, if you've ever washed your own car at one of those drive-in car washes, uh, that's about five megapascals of pressure. A bullet hits you with only about 21 megapascals of pressure. So this is still, uh, to create a, a metamorphic ride, you still need 20 times that. The Mariana Trench, it's the deepest part of the ocean, 110 megapascals of pressure. So on the surface of the earth, that experiences the most pressure. And the reason for it is you got all that water stacked up above, above it, pushing down uh, deep down on the ocean. So what I'm trying to say is there's nothing on the surface of the earth that's really coming close to the pressures we need to make metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks are made below ground typically, typically, not always, typically at high heat and high pressure. If we see them at the surface, they had to make their way up somehow, tectonic uplift or, so, or some other case. Now, <clears throat> so um, again, the deeper you go into the earth, you're increasing the grade of metamorphism from low to high grade metamorphism. And if you get too far down, then things begin to melt. So we got to be careful. So <clears throat> looking at this chart, so this chart looks at temperatures, it looks at pressures, and it looks at depths. All right. So how deep below the earth, what kind of temperatures we would expect, and the pressures that are resultant as you go deeper into the earth. So let's let me just show you how to read this because this might become important. So this is the region of diagenesis where sedimentary rocks are created. So up to about five kilometers, which also gives us around just under 200 megapascals of pressure, and then kind of less than maybe about 100. And 60 degrees Celsius. So in, this is this is where the, the conditions in which sedimentary rocks will, will form. Where metamorphic rocks are formed are in this low grade or high grade metamorphism. So again, low grade metamorphism is again up to about 400 degrees Celsius and 400 megapascals of pressure. So right around, you know, maybe between 10 and 15 kilometers deep. And then below that, more than 400 degrees Celsius, more than 400 megapascals of pressure, from 15 kilometers down to 35 kilometers, you get these high-grade metamorphic rocks. More heat, more pressure, higher grade. What that means, more in the next section. And then the area in red, that's where we're getting too much temperature, too much pressure, too much depth, and that's where... Uh, rocks begin to melt, and if we're melting rocks, now we're going back to igneous rocks, which is a little too far from where we need. So this unit kind of focuses in these these two ranges. Now this cross hatched section here, just to give you um, some information on that, that's uh, that band indicates conditions most commonly found in continental crust. So we're typically going to find, you know. The, these ranges in continental crust. For instance, if I said there was a rock that was uh, 20 kilometers deep and experienced 400 degrees Celsius of temperature. So at that temperature, at that depth, what kind of rock are we creating? And that's in the region of high grade metamorphic rock, high grade metamorphism. All right. Uh, so know how to kind of eyeball this chart a little bit, what kind of low grade versus high grade rocks you might get based on temperatures, pressures, or depths. All right. So let's go ahead and pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about the textures of metamorphic rocks. We'll see you back here in just a second.